this clip as well, which I think is absolutely incredible, personally for me. I think this is absolutely incredible. Uh, this is the best. So, this is from a podcast called Slick and Thick, which features Mickey Gall and one of the guys who was on Value Tainment. Now, forgive me, I don't know the guy's name. I'm actually going to get up on you. Let's see if I can get up on you because I want to give the guys credit. Uh, Slick and Thick podcast. Let's see what their names are. Um, Slick and Thick is hosted by UFC fighter Mickey Gall and a comedian oh he's a comedian okay i didn't know that he's a comedian called gerard michaels right and i think he also had a major league baseball career of some of some degree because that's what he was speaking about when he was on value tainment uh brendan was on value tainment with um patrick bent david or bet david and this guy was on there and he was kind of on there to be like the comedic friend and also somebody that kind of was a fan of brendan and i thought he did really well in terms of how he came across and he was obviously you know trying to get be friendly with brendan and try and you know have some banter there with him but for whatever reason brendan just didn't like the cut of his jib and just kind of was it felt like big timing him a little bit and i think ever since then the relationship is going to be up and down as he'll explain it in the pod that he's talking about and um it's been quite interesting to see because this is the first time you see like people that are involved in the entertainment industry, Hollywood, LA, in some respects, talking the way some of us talk about Brendan and about how he acts. And then you can see it's probably worse how he acts and how he goes on in person than it is how he acts online, like on content. It's actually worse if you believe Mickey Gore's side of things and his interpretation of how Brendan goes on. It's very, very interesting to see, actually. Uh, let's see. This is the one, right? This one. Let's see this clip. So, big up the Final Kid, um, subreddit guys, for uploading this clip. This is really, really cool. So, let's actually hear these guys speak about the issues they've had with Brendan along the way, right? Because I think this is really, really informative as to how Brendan is the way he is and why some people don't like him. Uh, uh, big fan of Callum. Shab, I, I, I can go both ways on it. Shab, I've seen, I just sometimes I've seen him be a, a flip flopper on mm -hmm. things. Um, e and it, even to me personally, like, uh, I've heard him on wrote on, uh, like giving me sometimes, some days he'll give me mad love. Talk about how I'm one of the toughest guys in the UFC. Talk about how, uh, like, uh, so he was on, he was like, when I was going to fight Sage Northcutt, he was like, Oh, that's a different level. Mickey's going to get his ass kicked. Like almost like shit on my parade, like right after the CM yeah. Punk fight. I was kind of like, all right, fuck this dude, whatever. And he's talking all shit. Mickey's going to lose to Sage. Then he's on Rogan, and Rogan's like, I think Mickey's going to beat Sage. He's like, yeah, he'll probably beat him. Yeah. Well, that's... That now, to me, one of the interesting things about Brendan Schaub is that this type of commentary that this guy is saying, right, about how he acts with fighters and how he talks about fighters before their fights, this is something that you wouldn't expect from an ex-fighter because you'd imagine if you're a former professional UFC mixed martial arts fighter you know what it takes to get in that octagon you know what it takes to get into that cage you know how hard it is the struggles the triumphs the anxiety the whatever it may be you know how difficult it is so you're going to speak with a little bit more grace a little bit more forgiveness in your you know maybe you just you just be, you be a bit more kind in how you speak about people because you know what it takes to be inside there now regular people like myself who've never done that shit regular journalists and stuff they're free to like you know um go extra crazy and speak extra harshly about these guys right they, they can say what they want oh he's gonna get fucked up he's gonna get smashed it kind of is your prerogative but you would imagine there will be a little bit of a professional courtesy if it's somebody that was in the same industry as you. That's where I think these guys get annoyed at. They can't understand why Brendan doesn't have the ability to do that. Why he kind of, you know, he'll just like dismiss somebody like he's got a personal issue with them. Then he'll be on their nuts like they're their best friends. It's really strange how he kind of goes about things. So I can understand if you're a fighter how it can annoy you a little bit because he should know better being a former professional fighter himself. That's like be a, let's be a little thorough in our fucking opinions. Nah, I don't see that's the thing. I'll sit I'll sit the fence before I I go talking out both sides of my mouth. And that's, that's what I think you meant to as a pro. If you're a pro, you should sit the fence a little bit. Um, but obviously, if you're an analyst, it probably pays to be a little bit more critical and kind of go hard on your choice because, like your lump it, you're gonna probably you know get a bit of clout for that anyway in the first place. So I understand where he's coming from in that regard. That's a, that's one of the only things, and it, sometimes it seems like a little like a like a LA dick rider. He's very LA. He's you know very, what I mean? He's very that's much just like kind of like that's that's not thorough to me.
Like so, I, I, I want you know, I like people who are who are thorough, and I, I don't like know him. You know what I mean? So I bet, I bet if I did, we'd be fucking friends. No, you wouldn't. That's another cop out to your people do. You probably wouldn't. That's the thing. And maybe it's the LA thing. You have to always protect your positions and you can't ever write people off. But sometimes, sometimes you can meet people who just, you don't vibe with personality wise, principles, morals, how they move, the cut of their jib, the way they talk. It just is what it is. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad indictment on him. It doesn't mean he's a bad person. It just means sometimes some people are just not for you. I think Brendan, for the most part, for a lot of people, how he acts with certain things, it's not going to vibe with some people and it will with others. Um, but I think you can definitely see that since the protection of Rogan's been taken away, people are a little bit more free in saying what they actually think of the guy, which has really been funny to see in real time. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just, I wouldn't, you know, speak out of both sides of my mouth about someone. Hey, look, man, uh, I was a fan of his, you know, I, I was, I was the guy that, I was a fan of his. Oh, that that said, hey, we should get this dude on uh, PBD Pod. You know, one of the dudes that pitched him. Actually, it wasn't me. Nancy pitched him a whole bunch, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, but he's definitely clout oriented. He wasn't really cool, which I get. That's kind of a currency. Some people fall into that nowadays. Yeah. He he showed up with it. Seems to be doing well for himself too. He showed up rolling deep. Uh, you know, wasn't really like interested in having a conversation or doing a pre-production type stuff while we were waiting on the, uh, on the studio. Then, um, uh, Nancy's like, well, Hey, we saw you were with jelly roll. This, you know, Gerard's uh, friends with jelly roll. And then all of a sudden he wanted to, you know, he texts jelly. Jelly's like, Oh, Gerard's cool, dude. All of a sudden now I'm cool. Yeah. I hate that too. I've had that happen to me before where, you know, you go into a, a, I went, I remember going into a store once not being friends with certain people and them looking down on me, and then I come back in with other people who are a bit more well known and famous. And suddenly, everyone's on my dick. Everyone's everyone's sucking me up and stuff. It's really, really strange. It's an awful, awful, awful feeling to have that kind of switch up and people, you know, acting one way and acting another because somebody deemed you to be worthy of their attention. It's absolutely ridiculous. Treat everybody nice. Treat everybody well until they give you a reason not to treat them that way. Personally, that's what I think you should do. Uh, big up Don Dun what's that Dun broke that back uh, you I saw you live waiting to let you know I did your stuff man thanks for the vids no problem brother thank you for tuning in appreciate you and big up Koyla too um, they're referring to Brendan Koyla this is these two guys are referring to Brendan Shaw of course who else are they going to be speaking about it has to be the big the big brown Baba. And then he was mad cool to me, man. And then after that, he was real cool. We, we talked on the pod, and he's like, want to come on my show? And it was dope. I did two shows with him over New Year's. It was really cool, man. I had nothing but good things to say about him. And then uh, goes on Rogan talking shit. <laughs> You're shitting on your baseball. Yeah, which is... Your, yeah. Your but at least say my name. Like, I could go on the biggest podcast about? in the world. Yeah. Oh, uh, because you wanted some of that clout. So you're falling into the clout game. Yeah, too. but if you're gonna shit on me for no reason, yeah, like like it was right, like right. shit on, like you just brought it up for no reason. And it was like, bro, I thought we were cool. Like, what's going on? Yeah, so you're just hanging out, had a good time, and then he goes on. Yeah, it's goes yeah, on the it's, biggest yeah, podcast like talking, in the world. Like to- yeah, talk like I don't like like. Like I don't like talk about like people like behind their backs like that. Like if if I have that opinion, like I, I'd yeah. share it with them. If I was like, hey, bro, you kind of, bro, you're being a little bit of a clown. Like, yeah. Gee, you obviously hate women. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, but so, I, won't, I won't go tell yeah. some other person, especially go talk about it on a podcast. Man, it, it was you know just I mean? it, it was just some to me. It's just some weird shit. It's like Saturday, I get a text like, yo, you want to come out on a boat? And then Tuesday, it's like, oh, yo, I had to put these guys in the place, Papa. Like, yeah. What no? <laughs> Yo, big up Uche, big up, big up, big up Uche. Yeah, um, this is hilarious, man. Honestly, this is this is a quick microcosm of like how difficult it must be to navigate LA being a regular human being, like a regular human being, like you and I, having to try to manage personalities and you know the landmines of dickheads and whatnot is just awful over there because you waste so much time managing and navigating through the dickheads, you don't get time to actually focus on the work which is probably what you should be doing. If you just focus on what you're there to do, production, directing, writing, stand-up, whatever it may be, just focus on your craft, it'll actually pay dividends down the line. 
But I'm assuming you get caught into the whole idea of networking and co recommendations and, you know, you know, whatever chit chat, chin wag nonsense. And then you end up having to suck up to people who are demonstrably awful people, people that you would probably never speak to if you weren't involved in the industry, but you feel like you have to because they're linked with so and so. They were, they were on this show. Um, they're associated with that person, all this malarkey. It just makes it so, so, so weird. I think there is a way to do it. I'm sure it does exist. I think if it was me, I lived out in LA, I would just literally focus on the work and focus on whatever small community or niche thing that I had going on. I would not even fuck with anybody else. I'd basically do what Rogan did when he was out there, right? He just focused on his podcast, didn't focus on anybody else. And essentially he brought everybody to him, right? He, he became the person that everyone wanted to kind of go to. He became the destination location, blah, 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 blah. But I think for the majority of people, they don't have that luxury, you know, they don't have that ability to do so, so they kind of have to play the whole smoochy, be your best friend, fake friend type of vibe thing, and hope that that kind of works for them, and really, it's not the best way to kind of approach things, if you think about it in the bigger scheme of things, really and truly, because you end up communicating with people who are dem demonstrably dickheads, but in this particular case, where there's been a show of interaction, it's pretty evident, like if you check out the episode that um this guy's talking about where he appears on value tainment uh, with brendan shaw you can clearly see he's trying his best to kind of befriend brendan he tries to kind of be pally pally with him he's kind of having it not having it um and then there's a lot of there's a bit of big time ish stuff going on a little bit of jockeying some egoness that you know they're, pot, they're pumping each other's chest and shit but you get to the point where you feel like they've obviously kind of you know the ice has been broken and they're probably friendly and he obviously mentioned it clearly they were friendly to a point where he was you know taking him out on shows and shit but i still think a lot of that stuff that he does isn't genuine i think a lot of that stuff is more so a ability for him to do like how do you do it like i feel like it's a it's a way of making sure he's got like a favor hanging over your head I think so. I think that's why he does that sort of stuff. Like, I, oh, I'm going to bring you on my show, have you open for me at New Year's, all this sort of stuff, right? It sounds impressive. It sounds really cool. It sounds really, you know, um, it just sounds like, oh, wow, thank you for doing me that favor. But in actuality, he's actually doing it for himself to make himself look good and to also have you in his back pocket so that you can't go against him because he helped you at that time to get some money in your pocket, you know? So... I'm not really convinced by those um those uh by those gestures of goodwill. They always seem a little bit, you know, they got like ulterior motives behind them. Just me personally. Again, it could be all done in good faith, but I don't think they are done in good faith. And it's just funny that these two guys have been able to read Brendan pretty quickly and they've they haven't even really had that many personal interactions with him and been able to kind of see what kind of a dude he is straight away. Um which again goes to show, you know, the dude just, you know, is one of those type of people really, isn't the greatest in the world, which again makes you wonder like Rogan always says he's the best judge of character because he grew up in a bad neighborhood or with a single parent. I don't know what he says. Some 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 drivel, right? Some Rogan drivel. When really and truly, like you know, what I mean, he platformed Brendan, gave him a career on a silver platter, and he's demonstrably maybe one of the worst persons out out of his fucking group of friends. Like demonstrably, a terrible human being. Yeah, he says he's, a, he's the best judge of character. Like. I'm not too sure, my guy. I'm not too sure if that is actually correct. Um, what are you guys saying here in the chat here? The segregation is real here. The dickheads are high up on the hills and they don't care what you are doing with a normal person for sure. You've probably never been here to say this trash. Uh, Christian saying, I have, it's trash. Uh, hey, easy on LA, please. Not too much on my seat. Okay, cool. No, um, no, I know what you mean. I'm sure, look, don't get me wrong, crash. I'm sure there's a better version. Like, these guys are not doing the best advertisement for LA. I'm not denying that. But I also went out there once, many years ago, and I could feel how, you know, you had to kind of play that game. But I'm sure if you just want to exist in your own little bubble and, you know, there's a community out of you people that don't care about that sort of stuff, I'm sure you have fun. It's same like Las Vegas. I'm sure there's a Las Vegas community in the scene out there that has nothing to do with the CD strip um, gambling type of things. It does exist. I'm sure of it. But from the stuff that these guys are presenting, I'm just talking about that side of stuff, how you would best navigate through it. I think the best way to navigate through it, if it was me and I was living out there, would be to just focus on the craft and focus on the work. 
Like, if you're actually in it for the right reasons, if you actually want to be in stand-up or in entertainment or in TV or in movies for the right reasons, focus on the actual work and it will pay dividends as opposed to trying to play the whole, let me be someone's friend, um, let me befriend you, let me come come on my pod, all this sort of nonsense. Like, it just, you know, you end up becoming somebody you don't want to be. You end up licking the asses of people that you probably thought you would never be licking the ass of. And it just takes away from the actual reason you're there which is to chase your dreams you know that's what I, that's that's just me but i could be wrong um 